Oké, okay, I'm back with Tarot de Marseille of the New Incarnation. And this is a creation of Eugene Finitsky and Elsa Kapatnakowski. Um, it's a beautiful deck with illustrated miners, Tarot de Marseille illustrated miners, which is really interesting. They have nothing to do with the Toth or the Rider Waite Smith. Anyway, the box is big, strong and sturdy, but not too big. If I... Place a Los Carabeo deck next to it. There is a little bit of a difference in height. And the width is much more clear and significant. So the cardstock they chose was quite chunky. Um, that one is not important. We are talking about Tarda Marche of the New Incarnation now. Um, there is a little white book that is very important because it gives you all the information about the not just the mi uh, majors but also the minors. There is a small Tarot de Marseille of the New Incarnation, but that one doesn't come with a book, I believe. So if you are interested, keep that in mind. Um, there was a certificate of authenticity, and this is copy number 510, but I don't know how many copies there were printed. So um, it's on the two of coins. There is Eugene Finitsky, and there's Elsa. Taromania is the shop where you can buy it, um, or just Google Eugene Finitsky. There's also an Etsy shop, I think. But um, here we go with the with the box. Um, a little white book is, I think, all in English. Um, let's go to oh here about the authors. Elsa Kapakovsky is philologist, art historian, member of the Russian Tarot Club. Um, responsible secretary of the French Royal Association of Tarot, author of the Golden Tarot of Klimt. For some odd reason, I cannot get into the Golden Tarot of Klimt. I don't have it, but I don't feel drawn to it. Dance of Forbidden Dreams and... Erotic Tarot Manara. I literally, definitely do not know anybody that loves the Manara Tarot, but um, she's interesting. Then there's Eugene, very famous face, professional illustrator, artist and tarot creator from Switzerland. He is very open and very approachable, so if you want to connect with him, then I think he would like it. Um, the book is important. It explains how they come about to create a um, new Tarot de Marseille. Um, and a little bit of history. And here it speaks of the Marseille deck signature attributes were its straightforward simplicity and its metaphorical nature for, at the time, the tarot deck was used as a medium for image-based communication between the common folk. I really like that. A collection of fables and parables of sorts. The Italians called it Fellino, uh, it Novellino, the French Fabio, the Germans Schwanken, in a way the... allegorical images of the trump cards, the triumphs, became the main characters of the tarot theater. And the court cards. Um, so this is about wood engravings. There's a whole lot about color here. But um, I like the fact that the miners are illustrated, but to be able to read the miners in a specific way, you do need this book that gives you a story of each card. So here we have the Patailleux and La Papesse, L'Imperatrice, L'Empereur and Le Pape, L'Amoureux. And there is EV. And La Justice. Uh, 
and the wheel, force, le pendu, la mort, temperance, le diable, le maison dieu, uh, house of gods, I think, l'étoile. So this is something that we are used to seeing, right? It's um, a typical, quite typical Tarot de Marche majors. Um, then we go, first we go to the, let me check the ones. And here you can see that um, it's different. It's not at all right away Smith at all, ever, not. Um, the four of Wands, let me check what the four of Wands, what story comes with the four of Wands. Two skilled craftsmen made a chest at the request of a noble family. The customers were anxious to get their Reliquary as quickly as possible, but the craftsmen were in no hurry. They worked calmly and carefully. This chest turned out very nicely. Master decorated with fine carvings from bottom to top. It had lance turrets and prongs on the walls. On the agreed day, they took the chest to the customers with joy in their hearts. Because the fruit of their labors was surprisingly good and the craftsmen had something to be proud of. The card combines the values of the Emperor Trump Number four, the numerology of the number four and the value of the one suit. General meaning, acceleration, a stable and progressive movement towards success, slow, beneficial change. And then it goes on about what it means in a work-related question or a money-related question about person and feelings and the general advice and the reversal. So it's really good to have the book and look up the story it tells. So here we have six of batons and I will do another one. Um, two neighboring kings were feuding over four years. The subject of the dispute was the trade road between their lands. Each built an impregnable fortress on their side of the border. From time to time there were Skirmishes in the gorge where the road passed and sometimes there were battles in which people were killed. The enmity exhausted both sides but the kings could not reconcile with each other. This could have gone on for a very long time but suddenly barbarian troops from distant lands began to raid their lands. The warriors were greedy, ruthless and very strong. That was when the king realized that they could not do it alone. They put an end to their enmity and formed an alliance against the formidable enemy. It often happens that in order to defeat a common threat, even sworn enemies unite and become friends. The card combines the values of the lover's trump number six, the morality of the number six, and the value of the one suit. Then we have general meaning, work, money, personal feelings, advice, and the reversed meaning. So um, you can reverse the meanings if you want to. And here we go with the uh, court cards. The Valet, Cavalier, Reine and Roi. So that's, these are the bags by the way, which is super cute. And I really like this deck a lot. Um, I didn't expect this to be so... Cute, <laughs> cute, I think. So what's going on here? Four of Cups. Let's do another one just for the fun of it. Um, this is Four of Cups. And there are two people in bed and they um, seem to be very interested in each other. Two lovers got married and began their life together. For them, the marriage bed became both a place of rest, a shelter for long, interesting conversations, and a field for amorous pleasures. They felt so good together, so calm and happy, so warm and cozy, that they realized that peace is not an obstacle to love, 
And reliability and loyalty also bring pleasure. The card combines the values of the Emperor Trump, number four, the morality of number four, and the value of the cup suit. General meaning, a sense of belonging to something important, marriage, bed, emotional stability, anniversary, uh, family and corporate holiday, then work, money, personal feelings, advice, and the reversed meaning. Um, if the card happens to end up upside down in your deck. And seven of cups. This is interesting. So the ten. And one, two, three, four. This is this again looks really normal or traditional. And so we are going to give them some attention later. And then we have the swords. This is a normal, quite normal ace of swords. Um, let's check the two of swords just for the fun of it um what's happening here a knight and a priest once argued about which was stronger in the world the sword of the book or the book the knight said what good are your manuscript to me monk and my sword is my best friend once i take it in my hand my enemy's head falls from his shoulders the monk thought about it and said How can you, a warrior, tell your enemy from your friend? How will you know if you are fighting for the right cause or if you lay down your head for nothing? You can't get anywhere without my books and knowledge. So the knight and the monk argued for a long time and could not understand what was more important, strength or knowledge. They got sick of arguing, but none of them could prove that their weapon was more important. They realized that knowledge has power in the hands of some people and weapons are power in the hands of others. One cannot do neither without a book or sword. And so they were reconciled. It's just these little stories that make these deck, you know, cute. I don't have an... It's art. It's cute art. And this looks really serious. If this doesn't give you nightmares, then I don't know what will. And the valet, le cavalier, le reine, and le roi, dp. Um, sword. So, the last suit is the coins. And there's a little bit of alchemy going on. The fisherman. There was a card somewhere that reminded me of Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus to the temple. But I didn't pay too much attention. I forgot to pay attention. What's going on here? That's beautiful. Um, and this one. And here we go with the court cards. Um, let me just take a couple of piles. And so for my hands, I think these will be a little bit too big to shuffle. Because the card, top is, the card deck is quite chunky, but I will um, get used to this. And this is a deck I really want to work with. I... The only thing I did with this deck till now was just go to the images and um, just be amazed. And I think this deck, it isn't expensive at all. I don't remember anymore what I paid for it. I think 40 euros, maybe a little bit more or less. I don't know exactly, but and Eugene was very kind in... I'm very approachable and really helping me to uh, make a decision that was going to work for me, which was really nice. Um, so it's quite sturdy. It's um, a strong card. 
Let's just call it a strong card. But let me see if I can shuffle the whole deck with my little hands. Because what I'm used to is this. And sometimes even this is a little bit too, I don't know, can be a little bit much for me. But I don't want to riffle shuffle. These are too big for me. But <clears throat> I can at least try. But let's see. Um... I wanted to know what's going on, what will go on in my day. And that's a good one. That one, this one. This is the one I meant. This looks like Mary and Jesus presenting Jesus to the temple. That's what it looks like to me. So, uh, okay. Um... I was way, I was up way too early, way too early, and so this is morning, and I feel rather dead. Not everything has to be super complicated in life. If I feel a little bit dead, then I feel a little bit dead. <clears throat> Before the first battle of his life, one soldier dreamed or, uh, that he encountered death on the battlefield. When he saw it, he begged for mercy, saying that he was very young and had not yet had enough time to live. Death silently mowed down everyone, soldiers, generals, camp followers, and card priests. For their hour had come. It came close to the soldiers, stopped its destructive march, and smiled at him. In that smile, he saw not a verdict upon himself or the end of his life, but rather a new turn in his fortune. In the morning, the soldier realized he would not die. This gave him strength and confidence in the coming battle. He came as hero from that battle. Um, general meaning, transformation, radical change of a situation. Sometimes a physical departure of the person, difficult change, the withering away of something unnecessary, an old ending stopping. So that's um, beautifully said. So what's going to change? What's going to change? Uh, so here we go. The eight. Um, here we go. It speaks of... The weird thing is I have the feeling that there is death going around in my family. Just to be a little bit serious about this. Um, and it has to do with an inheritance and somebody who is very decisive and be able to make decisions, uh, maybe a little bit cruel. Um, Ten of Wands. A winemaker was known for his excellent wines. Oh, that's the Ten of Coins, sorry. Oh, here we go, eight. Um, that one, one was, I was looking for this one. A young woman from an old poor family wanted to find her happiness. She had been taught it concept by her mothers and nannies at home. They also taught her how to spin and embroider well, run a good house and control her husband. The woman was diligent and skillful. She could go to a big city, become a courtier of a noble lady, see the world, show herself off, marry a man of status, maybe even for love. That lady was attractive and ambitious, but not courageous and of little intelligence. She did not take long to marry an easygoing, hardworking man who loved her. She bore him a child, ran the household and kept her husband away. Always in sight, making him work, work hard to provide for his family. So I think based on this, I um, had a rough night. <laughs> uh, having nightmares about my past, 
Um, and then my husband was there in the morning to um, brighten my mood and um, I'm ready to conquer the world and um, do something good with life. So just an easy one. Of course, I have to go a little bit deeper in this. I could go a little bit deeper in this and I will um, do a couple of example readings. So there's the sun and the two of swords. Um, shining light on the decision that I have to make and again something about choices which is really cool but um, I won't bore you to death with my reading experience until I am ready to make a proper video about them and this was um, Tara de Marseille of the New Incarnation more about this later um, I have had this for a while but like I said, the only thing that I did was sort of, you know, enjoy these images or illustrations or little pieces of art. Um, that's it. See you next time. Bye.